So the one thing we haven't yet talked about, whether you've made a firm offer or a conditional offer, one of the clauses within that offer is an allotment for buyer visits. From let's say zero, sometimes you may not be allowed any, but that's not usually the case. At least one to let's say 10 visits you might have before you actually own or take possession of the property. The first one you do, I don't know, a couple of weeks, let's say after you bought the home, if you want to, if you want to make any renovations or paint or buy furniture, you want to measure, bring in contractors, just to get your ducks in a row so you can hit the ground running on closing day. And then the second viewing you want to do, what, the day before closing? Yeah, one to two days before closing, you want to go into the property to make sure that it's in the condition that you expect it to be in and that all the major mechanicals and appliances are in working condition. Uh, things happen, you know, in the one to three months before closing and the condition of things can change. So you want to make sure that they're working because if they're not, you can go to your lawyer, make sure they're going to get fixed by the seller or that you're going to be reimbursed for the cost of replacing or fixing those items on closing. If you wait until after closing, it's really hard to get that money back because all the money has already been transferred to the seller. They don't really have any reason to pay you to fix those. And it's not like you're going to take them to court over a $500 washing machine. It's very difficult to prove that whatever you're trying to say no longer works, was no longer, was, wasn't working prior to closing. Because things do break down and coincidence is a possibility. Things could break down after you've closed and that's part of homeownership. You've seen it happen. 